Hi, welcome to the Unity booth. Thank you for being here. I see some familiar faces from yesterday's presentation. Some of you went to the Google booth. Uh, so thank you for just stopping by. And today, we're going to take a deep dive into the net code of the first person shooter sample that Andy was showing you before. So I'm not going to show you all these shiny shaders and shiny effects and shiny things. I'm just going to go into the, the, the lower level part of the project that is the net code side of things. OK, so my name is Arturo. I'm a technical evangelist for Unity uh, for the Americas. And the presentation was really originally made by the tech lead on the FPS sample project, Peter Andresen. So that's his contact information as well. Um, you know the project. Andy was showing you uh, what the FPS sample project is. But in a, in a nutshell, it's a vertical sli slice of a network game using Unity, using only built-in features, nothing from the asset store, nothing um, that requires a special Unity version. Basically, you can download Unity. There's a specific version, but nothing, nothing special about that. You download that, and you can start playing around with this uh, right away. One thing to consider is that, as Andy was saying, this is uh, using HDRP, the High Definition Render Pipeline. So probably you need a decent computer to run this, this project. Uh, on top of that, if you're uh, using the, the network part, so you probably will need um, a, a couple of, in, uh, of good and beefy machines to run this, this project. Uh, it currently runs only on, on Macs. So yeah, you also have to, con uh, sorry, on Windows, not Macs. You have to consider, consider that as well. There are two levels uh, in, the, in the project. I'm going to, to use uh, the level 00, which is a simplified version uh, of, the, of, the, of the other level. And if you have a computer that's uh, struggling a bit with the complete level, then you can use this level just to test some, some things, right? We don't have any effects or anything um, very interesting there, but it's easier for, for Unity to run the project there. So this is, in a nutshell, what the game contains. Uh, as you can see, we have a fully functional multiplayer uh, vertical slice of a game. So all the things that you expect from a <coughs> network game are here. You can create a, a server. You can connect to a server. You can have multiple clients in the, in the, in the network. Um, we have two modes. We have two arenas. And the cool thing and the exciting thing is that you can take the project, you can extend the project, and you can do something fun with this. Even if you are trying to do something a bit different from what we're showing here, you can go to GitHub, you can extract the important parts, and you can use that as a starting point. OK, now let's go to the net code of the first person, first person shooter sample. And here I'm going to take a couple of seconds to, to mention that this is using uh, mono behaviors, and it's using ECS, as Andy was mentioning. However, we're using the hybrid mode of ECS. So it's not this pure ECS world. We still have um, game objects and mono behaviors as well. So here you can see that I'm playing against another person. Uh, this, is, this is just to show that, in reality, this is, this is running through the, through the internet. We have a demo station on the other side of the booth. So if you want to see uh, this uh, being played in a network environment, you can actually go there and, and see. There are many things on the net code. There are multiple things on how the animations are being synchronized, how the game server works, how the matchmaking is working, etc. We're not going to cover all those things today. We're just going to cover basically the transport part of the, of the, of the, of the project. OK, so just a quick overview of networking in games. Who here is like a super experienced Unity programmer? Raise your hands. Oh, one person. Two persons. Um, who is, uh, who, who's used Unity before just did something? Raise your hands. OK, lots of people. I assume some of you are not Unity users. Uh, and I hope after this presentation, you become a Unity user and you buy thousands of licenses. So yeah, just let me know if you end up doing that. But yeah, if, if, if someone is new, absolutely new to, to coding or, or networking, um, I'll talk a bit about how everything works, right? So 
we have clients, we have servers, and we need to somehow connect uh, clients and servers across the internet. And there are multiple protocols that we can use. Uh, we have UDP, uh, TCP. We have some things in between. We have uh, other stuff. But basically, there's the, this, this problem that we are solving now, that is, how do I connect and send packets to other clients over the network or the internet, et cetera. So the way it works here is we have our client. So I'll be playing here on the, on the, on the bottom part of my, of my screen and I have a server, right? The, the upper, uh, upper window that you see there is just what we call a headless server, meaning it doesn't have any graphics, it doesn't have any audio, it doesn't have any input, etc. It's just a version of the game that is executing in the server. From the, ser from the client to the server and the other way, we're just sending packets. We're just sending information uh, between one over the other, and everything should be good, everything should work, everything should be, everyone should be happy, but there is one issue, and the issue is that we are not directly connected uh, to other clients. There's this cool thing that has Reddit and Twitter and Facebook called the internet. It's cool on one side, but on the other side, it brings some, some, some problems. Uh, so the next part of this pre the presentation is, how do we detect those problems? How, we did detect the, how did we detect the problems in the FPS sample? And how, can we, how, how did we fix them? OK, so for, UD, for the FPS sample, we're using this uh, protocol called the UDP, the Unreliable Data uh, Protocol, meaning that we're going to connect uh, without any reliability, meaning I'm sending packets from my client to the server and the other way but there's no guarantee that they will arrive. There's no guarantee that they will arrive in order or anything. So these are the issues with uh, UDP. So we have the destination, the, the, the source, the destination, and the information that we want to send. We pack that into a small UDP packet, and then we send that to the, to the server. The dangers here are duplication. What happens if a, a, a router somewhere in the internet duplicates our package, and the server receives two packages. What, what happens in that case? That's one, one of those dangers. Reordering, we are sending these packets, but maybe one packet, the, the packet number two arrives before packet number one, then we will have weird commands getting received. That's another danger. Uh, what happens if a packet gets lost because something happens? and the, the thing is, when we're using UDP, we cannot assume anything. We cannot assume any, any, anything will arrive to the client. So that's why, why we decided to build something on top of UDP. And you may, th may, may be thinking, OK, if UDP is not reliable, why did you use UDP and not TCP? TCP is the other protocol that is reliable. So you will always get all the packages in order, and nothing should get lost. The problem there is that TCP will bring you uh, this reliability, but at the cost of latency. So in a real-time multiplayer game, you don't want to wait as if you were watching Netflix or something. You want everything to be uh, as smooth as possible. So what we did was working in, on, we worked on top of the UDP. So those problems that we find, and many people uh, stumble upon the same uh, issues. All those problems, we wrote something on top of them to fix them, or at least to mitigate the, the impact that those dangers bring us. OK, so to, to fix the problems, we need to a way to detect the problems first. And this is what we are trying to do now. We want to detect the duplication, the reordering, uh, packet loss. And we need to measure the RTT. And when you see this, uh, this means the round trip time, meaning the time it takes for a packet to go from my computer, from my client, to the server, the time is, it spends on the server, and then uh, the time it comes back from the, from, the, from the server. It's not going to be the same packet, but I will get some sort of acknowledgement that the server saw my packet, did something there, and then uh, it's, it's sending something back. OK, to battle reordering, this is a, a simple uh, process, uh, which is add a number of a sequence number. So each packet will have a sequence number. 
you can see on the bottom left of the screen, these are uh, sort of um, API uh, classes and functions. So if you're curious about how this was implemented in the FPS sample, you can just go to that function definition and you will see, okay, this is how, how it actually works in code. So I also will be sharing the presentation because I have a lot of these um, um, calls. But yeah, basically when we create the package, we add an, uh, a sequence number and that's how the server or the client can detect, okay, uh, I already did, uh, received this packet. If another packet re uh, arrives with the same sequence number, then I will just ignore it. Or if I got them in, in, out of order, then I will just reorder them in the, in the server or the client. So that's how the packet lo looks. Now, how do we detect that a packet got lost? <clears throat> well, we will uh, add the sequence number on the, on, the, on the packet that I'm sending from one way to the other, but also I will send information, once I get the, uh, once I, the server sends information back, uh, we will send information about the last packet the other uh, client or server saw. So we will be able to say, okay, I received this packet, uh, and this was the last packet that the server saw uh, from me, received from me, so something got lost in, in between. And we need that information. Uh, this is just detecting the problem. We will use that information later to actually fix the, fix the problems. Uh, also, we send a bit mask. Uh, this is just for like uh, optimization purposes. Of all the latest packages, uh, latest um, packets that we were receiving or not. So in this case, we, say we have this knowledge mask. Uh, we say, okay, we received packet 54. We didn't get 53, but we got 52. And you might get an, uh, an idea of what we're trying to do here, right? Maybe if we have packet 52 and 54, and we're missing something in the middle, then we can do some sort of magic to predict what probably was in, in, in the middle, so yeah. Now, how we measure the round trip time, and this is important because we want, for multiple things in our game, we want to know uh, how bad is the, is, the, is the connection or how, how, how long is a packet taking to go from my terminal to the server and back. So we have to, to, to measure this uh, somehow. The important part here is that we also need to consider the time that the packet spends, uh, the time that happens when a packet arrives to the server that is processed and the acknowledgement of that packet being received uh, uh, is, uh, arrives to my, my, my client in this case. So this is basically the small formula in, in our example. Uh, so the round trip time is what from the moment I, I send the packet, uh, the time it takes to get to the server, the time it spends on the server, uh, and the time it takes to go back to my, to my, to my client. Okay, so we already know how to detect those problems, which is good. We haven't fixed those problems, but um, we, we are at least uh, a step further uh, from, from fixing those things. Okay, now how did we construct the core loop between the server and the client in the FPS sample? And here I'll take a second to explain. I've been, I've been following the forums, and apparently if you play uh, the FPS sample with 15 more uh, players, everything works. More than that, there's a, a known crash or something. So um, I'm not sure if they, they have fixed this already, but um, yeah, just for you to know that if something breaks after 16 players, um, don't worry, it's probably on, 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 our, si on our side. Now, <clears throat> in the FPS sample, we're running the game, or the goal is to run the game at 60 frames per second. Right? Maybe if you're on mobile, uh, you want this to happen at 30 frames per second. This means that my client has information of the input 60 times every second. Okay? If I'm moving the mouse, if I'm moving the keyboard, etc., that happens at 60 frames per second. We want to render the game at 60 frames per second. And this is, the, this is what we are actually sending to the server. We're not sending from the client to the server, where am I in the world? I'm sending information of 
what button was pressed or which command was, was sent. Like, oh, uh, the player moved the mouse, so it, it's going to rotate or something. These commands uh, are the information that we are actually sending. Uh, there's a, a, a huge list of commands that can be sent. But we create a packet, and we send that from the client to the server. We're sending 60 packets per, 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 uh, per second. Sometimes, and we, I'll show you this in a second, we don't send the 60 uh, packets per second, but that's the goal. But on the server, which is a headless server, remember we don't have any graphics or any other thing in the, in the server. We're not sending, we're, we're updating the game 60 times per second. We don't call those uh, frames. I, I'm not saying here that we're updating the server at 60 frames because these are not frames in reality. We're not rendering anything. So we have this concept called ticks. Basically, it means that once every 16 milliseconds something happens, then we, we, we tick, and, and that's it. OK, from the server to the client, we're not sending commands. What we send from the server, server to the clients, uh, we're sending a snapshot of the world. Basically, the server is simulating the, the world, and it's, it's telling the clients, OK, this is where every player in the world should be located at. Uh, this is the list of objects that got spawned and things like that. So you can imagine that the snapshot in a game that contains like 16 players might be uh, huge, right? So uh, that's one thing that we need to, to consider. Also consider that the server is just going to be sending 20 packets per second. OK? And most, uh, some of these packets might get lost in the way, uh, but we're not receiving 60, 60 uh, packets per second. In, in theory, then, it's not possible to update the game at 60 frames per second. But we will see how to, um, to work with that. So oh, yeah, sorry. So what could possibly go wrong in this, in this case? Well, if the packets are dropped, uh, another thing that could go wrong is I'm sending the entire state of the, of the world. Does it fit in a single UDP packet? That's another question that the, we need to find an answer to. Uh, the problem is, is my game going to update at 20 frames per second because I'm just getting 20 states per second? And finally, will the player movement will be uh, sluggish? Meaning, if I'm receiving 20, frames per se uh, 20 uh, packets per second, then I won't have this smoothness in the movement from other characters, etc. There's another point but that I probably won't have time to cover, but if, is if I have to lead the shots. OK, so remember, we have this headless server, meaning we don't have any graphics, we don't have any input, we don't have any, any output. So the, the server, in reality, is just receiving these commands. These are the packet 92, 91 and 92 are packets being received by clients. And we have a command queue. And we receive them. And everything is great. Then the server says, OK, let's update this, this tick. And we get to tick 91 in the server. But imagine there's another client who's got a worse connection or something. It's sending their packets. But they got, uh, we received those packets. Uh, in, in, out of order. So you see I received the 92 first and 91 second. And packet number 91 didn't make it in time for the, for the server's tick. So there's one, 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 one small problem there. Uh, now, we received some packets, uh, some out of order. But we remember, we had information from previous packet, packets. We have them in the, in, the, in the command queue. So what we can do is run some sort of prediction. And, uh, the, uh, uh, and we create, or we predict, what will have been the packet number 20, uh, 91. So that's why we, what we have here. Another thing is, does the entire world snapshot fits in a, in, a, in, an UDP, in a UDP packet? Probably not. If I'm sending the state of my entire um, Unity project with where in the world is every vertex in the, in, the, in, the, in the plants or in the trees, then probably not. We need to do some sort of, of cleaning uh, there. So naturally, we think we just need to, to send information of what changed, right? If something didn't change, then we can just say, skip this, 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 this part of the packet. Don't send it. Nothing changed. 
And that's sort of what we're doing here. This is just to remove uh, information that is not supposed to be sent. Then since we have the history of commands, we can simply run the, um, some sort of uh, prediction and we will be good to go. So in, this, in, the, in, in a nutshell here, we're just uh, showing how the, the actual packet will look like. Uh, this is uh, where you see the packet on the right. Uh, this is something similar to what we are actually sending in the, in the real game. Did, we didn't spawn any entities there, so we're not sending any information about that. And we can skip certain, certain parts. You just need to make sure that you, um, or in this case, we made sure that every time we skip something, uh, we, we, it's, it's clear, because otherwise, uh, everything will get out of sync. I have just two minutes, so let me switch to the computer. Well, yeah, I just want to mention a couple of, of extra things. Uh, since we're not sending all the, all, the, all, the, all the data in reality, we're just sending um, uh, parts of that data, we can run what it's called a delta, right? So we know what packet was, uh, was before, what's the packet that we try to send, and we can uh, compute something in the middle. We can use that delta, which is going to be compressed. Uh, we send that to the server, and the server can, or, or the client, and the client or server can use that uh, delta compressed thing to try to find uh, the, the next packet in case something, something went wrong. So yeah, this is basically the idea. I, I predict the green packet. Uh, I subtract the actual packet that was computed, and then I get this delta, which, uh, if everything went right, uh, should be a lot of zeros, so meaning the prediction went, went great. Uh, and we send that, and we do the, basically the opposite on the other side, and we can get the actual 91 pa packet there. Um, okay, so the question about will the, the world run at 20 frames per second, uh, I, I won't have time to explain a, a, a everything, but I will be at the Google booth, so if you want to keep talking about this, I'll be at the Google booth the rest of the show. But just don't worry, it's not going to update at 20 frames per second, because we will, uh, we will be doing this thing called uh, client-side interpolation. You know, we have one-third of the required for, uh, packets that we need, but we can interpolate between one packet to the other. And since we are also uh, predicting some values, then we can have uh, other frames in between. And this is what we are trying to do. If for any reason the prediction didn't work out, we can roll back and then play, uh, re replay the commands that we received, and everything um, should look at least smooth. Because if we were running this at uh, one third of the frame rate that we want to achieve, we will see this thing moving from here to here to here, and we don't want that. We want this to be a super smooth movement, something like this. Okay. Um, let me switch back to the co other computer just real quick. Because here's the, the, the project that we were showing before. Um, it's the same thing Andy was showing. This is what you get from, from GitHub. I just want to show you one uh, useful tool that you can, you can use. Because the way we were able to see these problems, they were, the way we were able to like, debug these, these things, was uh, using a tool in the console the FPS sample team did. So if I go here and I type net.stat, and I send a parameter of two, you can see here on the bottom part of the, of the graph, the red dots are, are the dots that I'm sending to the server. The blue dots are the dots that I'm receiving from the server. So you can see that it's appro approximately one third of, uh, I get a, a one third of blue dots, uh, uh, depending on, on what I receive from, from, the, from the server. And sometimes I get some gaps uh, on the red line, which is not a line, it's just uh, dots that are too close together. But when does that happen? And one, one place where this probably is happening is because my, ga my game uh, dropped some frames, so it's not running at 60 frames per second, maybe it ran at 50, uh, 59 or something. Also, if nothing changed between one frame to the other, then the client is 
probably not going to send a packet and it's just going to say, okay, the previous one was the same one, so uh, we're saving some bandwidth here. Back to the presentation. And just to wrap up. Um, Uh, the FPS sample is still under development. Uh, we are also accepting pull requests. So if you find something there, you can uh, fix something or you can optimize something, feel free to uh, submit a pull request. We've taken a, a couple of them from the community. Uh, and it's a great starting point to, 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 to see how a multiplayer game is made. Um, so if you want to talk about FPS sample or anything related to connected games in general, I'll be at the Google booth the rest of the day. So thank you very much and have a good GDC.